for structure, then it would be pyloric sphincter. So since we don't see the actual structure... It's just where it points to in the area. Okay. Yeah, area. yeah. Would you say, like, what muscle would be here, or what opening? Um, I don't know. I kind of feel like they might just say structure. Okay. It could say what smooth muscle band, but I don't know if they're going to give you that much of a hint. So it'll probably just say what structure is found here. So you can say structure and area for those two, right? If I want you to say sphincter, this should definitely say structure. Okay. If it was area, it would be the yeah, or area or portion, then it would be cardia. Okay. Now these ridges inside, these are called rugae. So those would be a structure, rugae, or all these lines and ridges. This allows the stomach to expand with more food that comes in. So and if it expands, then they stretch out. All right. Oh, um, another thing that's in your lab book is based on the area. This is called the greater curvature, and then this little inside area is the lesser curvature. Okay, so just areas, lesser curvature here, greater curvature is this whole portion of the stomach. All right, that's stomach. Now... Um, then we go into duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. I don't know how to make it so everybody can see it. Duodenum. Now, in the small, yep, in the small, small intestine, there are these ridges. The ridges. Those are called plaque circulars. That's these lines that kind of stick up. Um, they allow for more surface area. And then on top of those would be villi, which on top of those would be microvilli. So all for more surface area. Now let's continue down. Okay, then it goes into all this. Again, the next portion um, is the jejunum, but you can't tell where the jejunum is and the ileum is. So definitely duodenum. I could tell that's the first part. And then the jejunum, I don't know, it's somewhere in here. Where the ileum begins, I can see that because the ileum is the last part. So I see this is the large intestine. So the ileum is meeting it. I know that this is the ileum. But then you can kind of, it's where one stops and the jejunum begins is not obvious. So that's why in your book, and online, they had a picture, and if it pointed to this general area, instead of small intestine, it's called the ileojejunum, which is a combination of these two because it's not very obvious where one ends and one begins. Okay, so just somewhere in here, just scientific term is ileojejunum. Now, this part, though, I could ask you to be specific. So here or here, I can ask you to be specific. Duodenum, which by the way you can also call duodenum. They, it's used both ways. Um, and ileum, the final part. Those are obvious to me. Okay, so you'd have to know those. Now, let's continue and go into the large intestine, which is all of this, but we're of course going to be more specific and break it down into its components, which some of which you're already familiar with from the cap. Uh, first of all, the entrance where food enters from the ileum into the large intestine, this area here is called the ileocecal valve, that opening, ileocecal valve. Then it enters this area, which is the cecum. And by the way, hanging off of here as an accessory structure is the appendix. Okay. So let's do the large intestine. It goes cecum, first part, the ascending colon, transverse colon, Descending colon. Now, did it finally ask you to do sigmoid colon? I'm gonna say I'm adding it. I don't know if it's in there. This end part is sigmoid colon. You should have to know that too, because it's part. It's just this rounded part called sigmoid colon. Okay, then this is the rectum. Um, and then the anal canal, which leads to the anus. Uh, all right, now. Let's do some, that's the alimentary canal, gastrointestinal tract. Let's do some other additional structures. So staying down here, there are also more sphincter muscles. You have an internal and external sphincter muscle. 
the external sphincter muscle is made of skeletal muscle, which is a little different than normal. Usually they're all smooth muscle, these sphincter bands. But so I can definitely see, see this little bit? It, it's skeletal muscle. So that would be the external anal sphincter. Now, the internal anal, anal sphincter, which is smooth muscle, again, you can't see because it's part of this lining and it would circle around. So if I had a marker in this layer, not here, but here, inside, that would be internal sphincter. Okay? Yeah, like see how it's coming down? Because it would be part of that, the inside muscular layer, which is smooth muscle, so it'd be, but down here. And then out here is external anal sphincter. Okay, so you did the appendix. Um, okay, let's go to this. Yes, this whole thing is the liver. Now, liver has several lobes, okay? Think of how it sits in your body as if this were you. This is your right side. This is your left side. So, look and see where it's separated. This is the right lobe. This is, oh, excuse me, excuse me. This is the left lobe. You got a close-up shot of my <laughs> made-up bun. Um, left lobe. Now, if you want to see the other two lobes, you need to get inside. Okay, so, um, first of all, this green area is the gallbladder. Green's the gallbladder. So this side, um, okay. all right, so same thing here. I'm going to point it towards this one towards you guys, this one towards you. So gallbladder, gallbladder. Now, um, this is... It's like this and me. This is the right lobe, right lobe. Now, in between the gallbladder and then this line, this line is the falciform ligament. Falciform ligament. So in between these two areas, you see some brown? This is the quadrate lobe. Quadrate lobe. Okay, this is the left lobe. And then this little bottom section, way posterior, so it would be down here, on this one, here for here, that's the caudate lobe, caudate. So quadrate, caudate, caudate, caudal, like a tail of a dog area, caudal because it's to the back, it's more posterior, that's where they get that term. Okay, those are lobes. All right, now, remember that the, the liver makes bile which the bile functions to break down what? Oh, there's, uh, I didn't see Professor Imholtz. I'm like, who are these people and what's going on? Um, okay, I'm sorry. So it's to break down, hello? It's to break down what? What specific component of food? Fat, fat. It breaks down fat. Mm -hmm. All right, now. We need to get this product, bile, into the small intestine because that's where breakdown happens. So here's how this works. You have um, some green lines that you're going to be following. All right. Um, look at it on here. Okay. This line is coming from the right lobe. This line comes from the left lobe. So these are called hepatic um, ducts. You have a right and left hepatic for liver ducts. These top two lines from each side. The top line, and you can barely see the one on the left. Now where they come together, they come together in this little tiny area. Um, that is the common hepatic duct. Okay, the little section where they come together, common hepatic duct. Now, okay, here's the gallbladder, right? The line that comes off the gallbladder, this is the, um, I'm sorry, cystic duct. The cystic duct. Okay, coming right off the gallbladder, cystic duct. Now, all, all of those combine, so really the cystic duct and the common hepatic duct combined to form the common bile duct. And it's the common bile duct that you see running the rest of the length here. And that's the common bile duct that you're going to see coming down here in green. 
okay, it comes down here in green. That's the common bile duct. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, this area here is the pancreas, okay, underneath the stomach. The white line is the main pancreatic duct. The pancreas produces a lot of enzymes that are going to help break down all different types of food molecules. Okay, proteins, carbohydrates, nucleic acids. And so the white line is the common um, pancreatic duct. And then, when the common pancreatic duct, or the main pancreatic duct, you can say it either way, and the common bile duct meet, at the area they meet, where they're going to dump into the small intestine, it's called the hepatopancreatic ampulla. Hepatopancreatic ampulla. And that dumps all the products, the bile from the gallbladder and the liver, and the pancreatic juices into the small intestine. Is this low yeah, yep, where those two come together, where the green and white come together. Hepato, pancreatic duct. Hepato, because it's liver, pancreatic, pancreas, where they meet together. Ampulla is just this kind of swollen area where stuff leaves. Um, do you, let's see. Oh, oh, I know, on the large intestine then, some structures. You see this white line? That's tenia coli. Tenia coli is the white line, um, and the bulges that it creates, you see these sections, it kind of creates pockets. So this is a smooth muscle um, that kind of bunches up the large intestine, and each one of these pockets is called hostra. Each one of the little pockets is hostra throughout this. And I think that's it. Yeah, I can't think of anything else.